testing one. Hello everyone, how you doing today? I'm um, starting a little early because we got some great music that's about to come online here. Want to thank the praise team, Sunland Tahunga praise team, and uh, and we got you know a little Living Stones action in there as well. So it's wonderful to have you here at church. Let's go ahead and begin, and then we'll have prayer in a few moments. All right, Alex is coming. There's a lot of things to get through here. Sorry, guys, one step at a time. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, Happy Sabbath everybody. Happy Sabbath. Those also at home listening to us, and those of you who are far from us and our neighbors, we are welcome you all. We are happy saying Happy Sabbath to you, and we wish that you have a wonderful Sabbath day today. 
that the Holy Spirit will be with you and will guide you. We have to thank God for this day, which we have a sunshine. Also, we have a cool breeze out here. So we have to thank each and everyone who are here and those on the way coming to worship with us. So we'd like to thank you all once again. So at this moment, those of you who are here, we will bow your heads so we have a few prayer and the Holy Spirit will guide us throughout the rest of the Sabbath day. Oh, great and loving Father, once again, like to thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, that we are alive on this Sabbath day so that, Lord, we can come and give you thanks and praise, O oh, Father, for this wonderful day which you have blessed and you have blessed us with it, O oh, Father. So, Lord, as we continue, Lord, to give you thanks and praise, we pray that the Holy Spirit will be with us, brief the evangelist, so that, Lord, he will make us draw closer to you, and he also will draw closer to you. Father, continue to bless us, continue to guide us, and help us, O oh, Father, Lord, so that we all can be saved in your holy kingdom, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. But before they get going, I just want to... I know we're a distance here, and we're a little bit, it's, it's cooler today, so we're a little quieter today, but uh, I'd like to hear you guys out there. Can I hear you guys from this area over there? There we go. I hear you guys from this area. That's a little quieter. That's a, we could do a little better than that. Let's do it one more time. Can I hear you guys from over here? Ow. There we go. I heard a little bit, and you guys over here. There we go. All right. It's wonderful to be here. And as usual, we've got Seventh-day Adventist time, which means uh, about maybe 20 minutes behind normal time. So, but we're on task. Anyway, take it away, praise team. exalted the king is exalted on high i will praise him he is exalted forever exalted and i will praise his name he is the lord forever his truth shall reign heaven and earth Rejoice in his holy name. He is exalted, the king is exalted on high. He is exalted, the king is exalted on high. I will praise him. He is exalted forever, exalted and I will praise his name. truth shall reign heaven and earth rejoice in his holy name he is exalted the king is exalted on high he is the lord forever his truth shall reign heaven and earth Rejoice in his holy name. He is exalted, the king is exalted on high. He is exalted, the king is exalted on high. He is exalted, the king is exalted on high. Thank you so much. Let's see, am I online? Can everyone hear me out there? Excellent. All right. Yes, we got the horn over there. So that's nice. Um, now is the time to remind you, all of us, that uh, through this time, I know you always got the thing about money, right? But really, seriously, go ahead and throw up that, uh, that graphic, James, and um, make sure that camera moves over so we can see the graphic on that side. And and it's wonderful to know that there is online giving, even though sometimes we can't be able to give 
personally, we can give online. And uh, so remember that little treasure chest over there, your tithes and offerings are in there, or you can give it into the church house that's right over. Uh, you see there's three mailboxes. Please put it in the one with the cross, <laughs> not, not the other ones. And uh, that is safe, and we collect it right after the service. And also, number three, you'll see here, there's two QR codes. Make sure you indicate whether you give through an envelope or whether you give online, please go to Sunland Tahanga. If you're at Sunland Tahanga for your tithe and offerings, they definitely, Sunland Tahanga definitely does need tithe uh, for sure. And Living Stones as well, if you wish to give to Living Stones as well. We, both of our churches are one family. So remember, every dime that is given, Jesus multiplies. That's all for that. All right, now, uh, Ryan. Uh, there he is. All right. Um, Ryan, you had a bit of a testimony today to give, a nice short testimony before the Garden of Prayer. Um, what was it that you wanted to testify about today? I just want to praise the Lord for Sabbath school. Uh, you know, I've been blessed, thoroughly blessed by teaching it uh, so far this um, on Friday nights. And, you know, powerful testimonies have been given uh, during that time, and it's been a blessing to me. Um, and new people are actually coming. New people that, you know, I haven't met yet, uh, they're coming and, and joining in on Sabbath school. So, um, but, you know, we'll, we'll st talk about that for another time, uh, what the exact testimonies are. But, yeah, please come uh, to Adult Sabbath School on Friday nights at 7 o'clock. And, you know, you'll, you'll be, I'm sure you'll be thoroughly blessed as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ryan. Okay, technical difficulties on all sides. Isn't it fun uh, being outside? So um, those of you who are online, we're trying to make sure those instruments are getting to you, but uh, one step at a time, sweet Jesus. I think hopefully that's figured out. So now is the time for the Garden of Prayer, time where we bring before God our hopes, concerns, and needs. So... Um, Oh, I've got a few, uh, I got a few text messages just now. So um, uh, Doug wants to make sure, let's have a little music there if you don't mind, uh, for the Garden of Prayer. Um, Doug over in Hawaii, and we all know him. Clap if you know Doug. Yeah, you bet. He's been, uh, he's been, uh, Doug, uh, um, you're in Hawaii during the pandemic. Really, Doug? But uh, we, we love you, man. <laughs> and I'm so glad. You sh he texted me a picture of the beautiful view he has during this time. So we want to remember him and also his sister-in-law in our prayers. Want to remember her in our prayers. Also, it looks like Eric. Eric, over there in Indonesia. It's wonderful to have you with us. And um, I haven't seen you in a while, but it's great to have you here. Also, um, want to make sure that we are very, oh, Sherry just gave me this message that we're so happy that Fritz's birthday is this week. Praise the Lord. Fritz, you're doing so much better than you have been in the last few weeks. I'm glad you're recovering well. And uh, just remember, you are loved, okay? Even though we are all over the world here with this pandemic and many people at their houses, you are important. Um, also, Diane here today. Diane brought up Dikran, who is continuing to recover. Um, right now, uh, there is something happening. They're trying to figure out exactly what the issue is with his health, but we want to remember Dikran in our prayers. Also, let's remember Deborah, who is uh, sick with COVID-19, and so want to remember her in our prayers. And uh, just stay strong. And uh, keep her in your prayers and everyone that is dealing with this disease, this, uh, uh, this virus. Also, Miriam brought up Fatma and also Kadri. Kadri. We want to remember them in our prayers. And we ask for peace, love, and forgiveness to fill their lives. Uh, I believe that's over in Turkey, right? Over in Turkey. So we're praying for them. And uh, the great thing about God is God is at all places at any time. And so he is around and he loves so much 
no matter what part of the world you're from. He loves you. Romeo, thank you for your message. Um, we want to continue to remember Lisa's dad, Lisa, uh, Romeo's wife, Lisa. Uh, we want to remember um, her dad passed away. Uh, Antonio passed away a few weeks ago. We want to remember uh, again and ask for God to bring condolence to their lives. And it's hard. It is hard to lose someone. And so much loss has happened. We remember also uh, the Westry family as well as the Ortiz family who have lost as well. Also, um, we want to remember, we're so happy and pray, we praise God that Atilaida and Anthony are recuperating well. So, Romeo, thank you for those, those prayer requests. And we want to continue to pray for Adelaida and Anthony, not only to be healed in body, but also in spirit. Uh, also, um, Anna, my sweetheart, brings Ted here, who has a stroke and now is recovering. He had a stroke, and he's now recovering. We want to ask for, for God to be with Ted and his family. Also, Domingo. Uh, who had a triple bypass with four grafts last Monday. He already has left the hospital. He's doing very well. That surprises me. <laughs> that He looks so good online. So anyway, Isang and Umbeng, it's great that your dad is working it out. And we remember also Dory in our prayers. All of you guys. Dina, also Dina, who I spoke to yesterday. We want to remember George, who is in need of healing. He was in a procedure yesterday, and we pray that that procedure goes wet or that went well. I didn't hear anything, but we prayed for the doctors, nurses, and technicians all involved in that. And also, we want to remember um, uh, the Camara family, the entire family, and all of them. Uh, also, Yvonne brings up Marlo as a little girl, and uh, this little girl needs prayer. And so we want to remember her to be with her health as well as other things. And, um, and again, we want to remember all of the cousins. Cosette, your cousins over in, in Lebanon. We want to remember them as well. And uh, we always want to remember for good housing for any of those in our community that need it. And uh, also we want to remember Benson in our prayers, and of course, both Shirley's, Orvin Shirley and also the Livingstone Shirley here. So we want to remember them and all of those surviving the earthquake in Indonesia. Do you have other prayer requests now? Uh, if you have a prayer request, either bring it now or write it down so we can have it on Tuesday for the call to prayer. Who here is a part of the call to prayer on Tuesdays on YouTube and Facebook, and now we're putting it out on Instagram? Anybody a part of that? Become a part of that. That is something else. Now there's a message time and a prayer time. You can split it up. And uh, so uh, let's bow ourselves. Hey, Romeo, there you are out here. It's wonderful to have you here, man. And uh, we ask now, if you wish to bow your hearts, your souls to Jesus now, let's pray together. And remember at the end, we will be, um, we will be also ending with the Lord's Prayer. Let's bow ourselves together. Lord Jesus, thank you. We praise you and we ask for your presence, O oh God. Thank you for loving us. Though we, though we fall in so many different ways, you are faithful, God. Lord, we ask for special healing upon those dealing with sicknesses, whether it be COVID-19 or otherwise, many health circumstances, many unspoken requests. Right now, I'd like to ask anyone, raise your hand if you have a request that you would like to tell Jesus personally right now. Raise your hand. Yes. Jesus sees, hears, and understands because he knows you inside and out. Lord, also we ask for you to be with all of those dealing with uh, front lines, those that are in the grocery stores, those are the healthcare professionals, those that are doing their jobs and that are facing every day possibilities of sickness, but Lord, continue to be with them. 
be with our state and our country. Be with our churches, Lord. Allow each pastor and member to see ourselves as essential. We must do something for you. Virus or no, we must find a way, something we can do. Lord, help us in the circumstance we are in, whether through prayer, petition, or action, or finances, or any other way. Lord, allow yourself to be inserted into our lives. Lord, also another name that I did not say here because I did not yet write it down, but be with Andy and Esther. Continue to heal them, be with them. They had a rough day last few days. Lord, also we ask that you be with our country. Give us common sense and wisdom. Lord, thank you that we are opening up so that people can financially begin to live again. Lord, help our church and the churches as we continue to do your work. Take what small amount of funds that come in. Multiply them so that there may be ability to do more for you, Jesus, worldwide as well as at our local churches, Sunland Dahanga and Living Stones. We love you, Jesus. We praise you and we thank you. And we look forward to seeing you in an earth made new, no more social distancing after the second coming where we shall not be separated by virus, by health, or by race. We shall be one family as we in faith are one family here. And now let us end with the Lord, with the Lord's prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Let's say it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive those indebted to us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever, ever, and ever. Amen.
Thank you so much. That was beautiful. And uh, wow, every week is a new week when we're outdoors, right? Uh, last week we were inside, I mean, we were underneath with the uh, rain and everything, but uh, every day is a new day with sound and all that. But it's wonderful to be able to do something for God and be a part of this. And it's wonderful to see all of you out there. Are you staying warm? I found out that our heaters out there now are out of gas. Apparently, they were working beautifully and they went out of gas. So, one step at a time. So, you got hot hands that we're handing out. We, we've got a few people with hot hands out there. Uh, so, let's stay warm, and I'm glad you are with us. But I digress. For last week and the week before, we've been going through something very have you been enjoying this small series? First, we dealt with the concept of how the government, how God's government is set up. What are the basic two things that set up God's government? Do you remember? Love and what? Wait, I know you were listening out there. Maybe. Love and an F word, a good F word, freedom, is God's government is set up on those two things. And you remember how Lucifer, when he fell, God did not cancel him. He did not shut him up. He did not reprogram him when he disagreed with God. Instead, he allows sin to happen. I know many people tell you that Christian religion says otherwise, that God is a controller, wants to tell you what to do, but from the Bible we know that is not true at all. In fact, in fact, there's an entire world of sin and pain and suffering because God does want people to choose the right thing. But sometimes and many times, we do not. 
than the second section was last week. Because the question comes up, if he is such a God of love, then why in the world is it that he french fries people for all eternity? And we talked about how hell is not an ever-burning thing. Biblically, there is a time when there will be no more suffering, no more death. It's over. The final enemy to be destroyed, according to Paul, is death. So, gone. No more suffering. No more pain. Hell is that disconnection, complete disconnection from God because of a choice that that individual makes. Lucifer makes that choice as well as many on this earth. But as we said at the end, Peter says, but wait a minute, God is not slow in keeping his promises as some of us look at slowness. He wants everybody to get to know him, to be repentant and change. Are you with me? So that process continues. And now I'd like us to move to the original sin and discover how that sin works in our lives. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Jesus, Lord, as we look at true original sin, we ask that you give us an understanding of that and see how in our own lives and even in politics and even in this world through media, we know sin by its right name rather than just actions that people tell us. Instead, we understand where it hides in our hearts. God be with us as we do this in your name. Amen. All right, you got your Bibles? I saw quite a few guys coming. I, it's nice to see you. A few of you came flying in. That's great to see you guys here. Um, I'm going to move this so I don't trip over it. All right, very good. I'd like you to turn with me to John. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. You remember, um, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, John 3.16. You remember that? Well, I'd like you to move just after it, a few verses down, when we get to John the Baptist, okay? And I'm going to start with verse 22, John chapter 3, 22. After, Jesus, after this, Jesus' disciples went into the Judean countryside, where they spent time with them, and they baptized. Now, John was also baptizing at Enion, near Selim. Because there was plenty of water there. The people were coming and being baptized. This, of course, was before John the Baptist, we're talking about John the Baptist here, was put into prison. Now, an argument developed between some of John's disciples and a certain Hebrew, or we know him as Jesus, a certain believer. And uh, so this is Jesus over the matter of washing or baptism. They came to John and they said to him, Rabbi, that man who was with you on the other side of the Jordan, the one you testified about, you remember that? John said this when Jesus came, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. Do you remember that? He said those wor words <coughs> about Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. Forgive me here. Got to get the flipper. There we go. Water it down. All right. Which takes away the sins of the world. He testified about him. And he says, that guy who you testified about is now baptizing more than we are and that you are. Basically, he's saying, John, these disciples are saying, John the Baptist, go over there and tell him to stop and send their believers our way. Do we do that as Christians sometimes? Do we do that as individuals? It's competition, isn't it? It's kind of like Walmart and Target. Who here's a, I know you don't want to admit to it, but who here's a Walmart person? Then you have a Target person. You know, you'll see the different personalities, right? 
Uh, now, I can't say, I used to be able to say who's the Kmart person because it doesn't exist anymore, it seems. But um, back when I was young, Kmart was the only big box store that existed in the early days, at least in the areas that I was. I remember in Montana, mom and I used to go in, I think it was uh, Shelby uh, or maybe Butte, we used to go over to Kmart and I looked through the action figures area in Kmart. I loved it as a little kid. And uh, then it came to the East Coast and Kmart was a little more passe. A place called Target was starting to come out. It was a little different. Walmart, a little different than that. Walmart's cheaper, Target's a little more expensive, but they're a little classier, you know, that kind of a thing. You know, that whole thing, it's all competition. And these stores do what they do to draw people to them. Well, John the Baptist, and I have here, I have here from the museum, are you there with the camera? Can you guys see this? We have John the Baptist. He's busy telling everybody how he had camel skins he wore. Interestingly enough, camel was an unclean animal and he was wearing it as a, uh, as a, uh, a robe. John the Baptist is wearing it and he is telling everyone to repent. The uh, people in the temple didn't like that he was yelling about the sin in the temple and then the leadership, right? So John the Baptist was telling everyone to repent, but then a guy named Jesus comes and now with his disciples, people are getting baptized by, actually it says in, in here that it wasn't actually Jesus baptizing them, but Jesus' disciples were. So more people are going to them. Why are you letting that guy get all the attention that's supposed to be for you, John? Competition. Sanctified competition. You know what competition is all about? It's about being the best. Or at least seen as the best. Right? The smartest, the wisest, the more classy. Or maybe it might be a different form. Maybe in the religious circuits, more holy. Have you ever seen churches like that that are more holy? They don't talk as much in church. No one runs. Everything's more quiet. Maybe there's another one that has competition. They're more cool. This church is more cool because we can run. We can have a great time and the music is more hip. More cool, more fun. Maybe we all have competition in different ways, don't we? And the problem with competition is not necessarily that competition is bad because it's good to be able to learn and become better and be able to check against watching others and saying, you know, I should do that better and learn better from it. But when competition becomes about yourself and getting what you want and getting all the attention you need, ah, the sermon today, the title is Our I problem. Now I have glasses here, these glasses, but I'm not talking about eye problem as in seeing eye, the eye, eye problem. I want you to keep your finger in the book of John in chapter 4, but I want you to move again now to a verse that we dealt with two weeks ago in Isaiah chapter 14. If you're with me, got your Bibles? Raise your Bibles up if you got them. I want to be able to see them out there. Or you got it on the phone, that's fine. Get a good version. I'm doing the New International Version, but you can follow along in any of them. If you have the King James Version, you probably will have the specific name being mentioned, which is Lucifer, as opposed to the NIV, which says Morning Star, which is actually a more literal translation from the Hebrew. This is Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. Are you with me? It says, How you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, or O morning star, the son of the dawn, O Lucifer, son of the morning. You have been cast down to the earth. You have been laid low, you who laid low the nations. You said in your what? 
You said in your what? Your heart. I will ascend to the tops of the heavens. I will rise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned in the mount of assembly on the utmost heights of the mountain. I will, ascend, I will ascend above the tops of the clouds and I will make myself like the most high. What's the word that's the definitive word in there? It's a one letter word. What? I, 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 I. The Beatles had a song. I, me, mine. Remember that? Any of you 60s uh, people? All through the day. I, me, mine. I, me, mine. I, me, mine. George Harrison, I believe, is the guy that wrote that one. He was a deep, he was the deep beetle. It was all about me. I, I want, I want what I want when I want it. It's like fast food. I am central. Sometimes... We all get like that, even in religious circles. Competition becomes the way to tell other people they are unimportant so that I can be noticed. My way is the way. Everyone else's way is wrong. And in fact, interestingly enough, interestingly enough, we take this to the point of shutting up anyone and closing down anyone that has a different point of view from us. Because if I am right, obviously everyone else is what? Wrong. You even see it in social media, right? See it in social media where there's a public discourse and all of a sudden... Only one opinion should be the one. Boom! It's done. I'm not getting into who's right and who's wrong, but there's something wrong with us if only we can have our point of view, and that's it. No other point of view, only mine. You know, interestingly enough, if you read the book Patriarchs and Prophets, Lucifer himself used the argument of being open to every idea that God was closing down. But yet, interestingly enough, if you don't choose his side, you're toast. I remember when I was at uh, Columbia Union College, it's, it's now Washington University, over there in Washington, D.C., and I had a teacher. And the teacher said, in the beginning of class, it was principles of the Christian faith, and I never will forget this moment. He said, every one of you, he began the class with every one of you, and he pointed to all of us, every one of you are Satanists. And I was like, you know, it's those, that's, that's how you begin a class, Right? It's near the beginning. It's like the second day. Every one of you are Satanists in this room. Because every one of you want what you want. In our lives, we are beginning kind of as it. Because all Satan wants for us to do is not. He doesn't. We always think of Satanists being people that are over there attacking or people that are over there putting uh, dirty bombs and exploding people. We look at those people over there that are trying to censor us. We look at people over there that win in actuality. All he wants us to do is say, I am most important. I am going to get mine. This is not to say that it is not good for us to be able to do something good for ourselves. We must have good for ourselves. But if we have a mission that has something to do with something larger than ourselves, should I say, when we 
give our lives to God, then that satanic influence of wanting what we want all the time in the way we want it now becomes exercised and we start to give ourselves to something that really lasts and matters forever. I've got a bunch of verses here and I may or may not get to them. But central to this, have you ever been in a situation where you got everything you wanted? Have you been in a situation where you were given stuff you fought for and then when you got it, you weren't happy? I remember when I, uh, I might have told this story. Um, I wanted a bike so bad when I was in New York. And in, in New York, you know, uh, uh, I was in the 80s and they're all, you know, you know the, it's like Goonies days back in the 80s. And we were in Long Island and I remember at Christmas, um, went to Toys R Us when there actually was a Toys R Us and bought a bike. It wasn't the most expensive bike, but it was, it was a good one. It, it, was, it was a dirt bike, you know, and, and, and it was, I was gonna have a great time on it. And it came to you in a box because I couldn't afford the 50 bucks or 30 bucks, whatever it was, to have it assembled for me. So I was going to get that bike and finally I had gotten the money together. And we went and bought the bike and I started putting it together. And there was one morning before we had to leave for Virginia and I said, I'm going to try the bike out. So I started riding around the neighborhood. I was so happy. And guess what happened? One of my friends, one of my friends who had a bike, and I wanted a bike so I could like ride with him instead of him riding around and me just walking, right? <laughs> he, as we were riding together, smacked my back wheel, bent the entire back wheel, and from then on it was doing this. That bike never rode real again. <laughs> and that was just like, literally, I rode it for 10 minutes, 10 minutes, and already it was messed up. Getting what I want isn't all it's worth. Let me read here. Now back to John, John chapter 3. Are you ready with me? John chapter 3. John chapter 3, and I'm going to keep reading what John the Baptist said. So, verse 27, remember the disciples of John the Baptist, John the Baptist, by the way, here's a little bit of, if you want to see, a, I know it's water just like anywhere, but this is from the Jordan River here, water, sitting here, and John the Baptist was being told this guy is preaching and he's getting more disciples than you are, tell him to stop. His answer here is verse 27. John replied, a person can receive only what is given to him from heaven. You yourselves testify that I said I am not the what? The Christ. I am not the Messiah, but I am sent ahead of him. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. Now, listen very carefully. The bride belongs to the groom, right? The friend, or should I say the best man, who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he heard, hears the bridegroom's voice. You know what that means? It means that there are the best men and there's the bride. When they come together, the best men and the, the uh, bridesmaids, they should be happy for the bride and the husband, right? Because it's them getting married. It's not all about you. True happiness does not come from getting what we want. True happiness does not come from telling other people that they can't say the things we disagree with. It just makes us more angry. It makes us more controlling when we're like that. It is the reason why Lucifer himself can never let go of the anger he has for God because he does not know where joy comes from. 
He does not know where true meaning of life comes from. Are you with me? Getting what we want is not that which makes us happy. All of us want a big bank account, right? And guess what? With a bigger bank account, sometimes we got to pay for more stuff. I remember Tony Dorsett back in the 80s. He was like the big time, I don't know if you remember the Dallas Cowboys. Tony Dorsett was the highest paid player in American football. Uh, uh, he's an African-American running back, and he could haul. He was the highest paid, the first guy to get a million dollars a year. The only problem is many of the players on the Dallas team, it was on the news, had to help him with his debts. More money does not mean more happiness. More stuff does not bring joy. In fact, sometimes more stuff brings more pain and suffering. The question is, is why are you getting that stuff? Why are you doing what you do? What is your mission in life? And John the Baptist says here, the bridegroom waits and listens for him. Excuse me, the, uh, um, the friend of the bridegroom waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine right now, and it is complete. Basically, what John the Baptist is saying is, if more people are being baptized over with Jesus, I'm happy because he is the guy that I came here for. And then he says these famous words, John 3, 30. He, meaning Jesus, must become greater, but I must become what? Less. What a powerful statement. So different. John the Baptist is so different from Lucifer, who says, I shall be like the Most High. I shall ascend above the clouds. I, 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 I. And I have here, I have here this. It's from the Middle East. Grandma Aiken, I believe, was the one that got this. And uh, this is a symbol. I know it looks like an old man with a long beard. <laughs> But it is a symbol of, a, of someone who gives his life for those he loves. When the wolf comes, he doesn't run away. The hired hand is in for themselves. So they run away because they don't care about the sheep. But he dies for his sheep. I is not the center of his life, but instead his mission is. And God, because God loves the sheep, his mission is for those sheep. Not because he himself would love them on his own, but because God loves the sheep and therefore he cares. Are you with me? There are two different, two different fathers we can have in our lives. Now this is one where it gets intense, and I only have a couple more minutes, so... Uh, I want to read this real quick. Jesus was talking, this is in John chapter 8, John chapter 8. Jesus was talking to the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and those at the temple. And he was, um, he was telling them he had just, there was disputes right after he had, remember the woman caught in adultery, and he forgives her. They were trying every possible way to kind of politically twist him around. Kind of reminds me of today, right? They were waiting for Jesus to say something that, so that on social media they could cancel him, right? 
They were trying to find ways to catch him, catch him. And now, now we got the sound bite we want from you. Now we can nail you to a cross or, or get you out. Get those people not listening to you so they listen to us, right? Guess what Jesus says about them? Anyone who wants to be only the center of life, Jesus says this to. And this is where you find up the true paternity test. You know what a paternity test is? When you go and find the, the, uh, uh, the DNA and you find out whether someone's your dad or not genetically, here's the true paternity test coming. Jesus says, verily I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. This is in John chapter 8, verse 34. Anyone who sins is a slave to sin. What is sin? I. I will be like the most high. Take it like a little, see the S? I, N. I is the center of sin. It's all about me, right? So anyone who's a slave to sin sin to anyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be truly free indeed. Remember that? Freedom is central of God's kingdom. Sin is what enslaves you. Because you always want what you want. We always want what we want. And because of that, we can never find joy in our lives. We are slaves. We are shackled to this identity in ourselves. We always look at others and say, I want actors to look just like me. That's my identity. That's sinful, honestly. It's not about us. But when we have been taught to be sinful... Our insides want what we want at all times. Our identity lies inside us. Jesus has a different plan. Let's move on down because time is remaining. Verse 42, then Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I have come here from God. I have not come on my own. God sent me, Jesus says. Why is my language not clear to you? Because... You are unable to hear what I say, for you belong to your father. What? The devil. Lucifer. The accuser. Sin is about ourselves. The father of sin is about accusing everyone else. Because when, when everything's about you, you point that finger at everybody else. Right? Right? But my teacher always used to say that when you're pointing your finger, when you're pointing your finger, three more are pointing back at you. So I went like this. <laughs> I don't want to... Honestly, this is why Jesus says do not judge or else it'll come right back like a boomerang on you. You belong to your father the devil. And you want to carry out your father's desires. That's the true paternity test. He was a murderer from the beginning, holding to no truth, for the truth is not in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he's a liar, and he's the father of lies. Yet, I tell the truth, and you do not believe me. Can any of you prove me guilty of sin, Jesus says? I'm telling you the truth. Why don't you believe in me? Whoever belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. We Christians sometimes want to force others to believe what we believe, don't we? We'll work on them, keep telling them what we think, and if they don't believe it, then canceled. Never mind. What if we Christians did what Jesus did? What if we would not judge people based on what they're believing or what they say or what they do? Instead, see them as human beings that Jesus died for. No matter how evil you think they are. 
no matter how wrong you and I might think they are, there is value in that person. Eternal value. There's eternal value in every one of you here. You know that? Because true identity cannot come from you. It can't come from you. If you want to find joy in finding your identity, you must find it in Jesus. How is that? Well, I've got one symbol for you. It's this. The cross of Jesus. On the cross, your sins were killed. Your eye problem that you and I have, our wants and our wishes to get what we want at any time we want it, Jesus destroyed that at the cross. I know you sometimes have feelings that come out of you and you want what you want, but the penalty of doing that was destroyed on the cross of Calvary. And because it was destroyed through faith and identity in our true father, our true brother, Jesus Christ. Yes, David, Yeshua HaMashiach, right? Jesus Christ, our savior, the one who died for you and for me, our identity when it is in him, no longer do we truly need to be the center of attention. We don't need all that competition and all of those feelings. When they come out, we go, okay, never mind. We laugh at it. When Jesus has worked in your life, the stronger he works in your life, the less you need to be central in your life. Now your eye becomes a little eye. That's why I kind of like the iPhone, you know? The iPhone has it as a little eye. I know, I know our phones have made us central to our lives again, and social media has put us in the center of everything. But the idea of the little eye is the best policy and recipe for joy. When someone wrongs you, do you immediately get mad at them and take it personal? Have you ever been driving in traffic and someone cuts you off on the road and you get angry? Do you know why you get angry? Sometimes because you and I take it personal. It's almost like that guy was like in the road. Hey, I'm going to try to cut him off because he looks like a mean guy. So I'm going to cut him off. You know, we think like that a little bit. But that's not how life is. If we have a smaller eye in our lives and a bigger he, Jesus Christ, in our lives, we will not need constantly to do stuff that makes us feel better. Now, the stuff we have is useful for our lives. The things we experience become a joy to our lives. Do you want that joy in your life? I know I do. I'm telling you, I want that joy in my life. I want to have joy, peace, and happiness in my life. But it's interesting. This is the paradox of life. Getting what we want isn't the way to get what we want. Instead, we must give ourselves to his future for our lives. And you will find that even if your life is short, you will have a full, joyful, and peaceful life. Even if there's craziness going around you, even if there are viruses attacking, even if there are wars and rumors of wars, even if you're in the midst of a war, we have a thing called shalom. Peace. Shalom Alechim. Peace to you comes through our identity 
not being based on what, who we are or what we look like, but instead having it based on Jesus and what he did for you. And not only you, but the entire world. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Lord, help us to alleviate ourselves of the eye problem that we have so infesting our lives. When we feel like someone else must be put down because they're putting us down, allow us to have self-control. Give to you the feelings we have and ask for wisdom to do what is right. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us the promise of your Holy Spirit so that we might have self-control in this. In your name we ask these things. Amen.
Let's bow our heads for one more word of prayer. Father, heaven, Lord, we, we thank you so much for the sermon. Lord, we, all of us have an eye problem. And Lord, we give you our hearts, Lord. Work a miracle in our lives. Lord, as we spend time with you, uh, we ask that you teach us how to unselfishly serve you and serve others as well so we can find true joy. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <sighs> Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Sterwin, wave your hand around a little bit up there, Sterwin. There we go. Thank you for leading this out. And uh, it was great having you guys. And uh, remember, uh, if you are online, like and subscribe. Like it. If you like it, smash it. It moves that algorithm so that on YouTube and Facebook, it can get shared. And share it as well. Share it with your friends any of these things. May God bless you all, and I'll see you on Tuesday evening for the call to prayer. Thank you. And by the way, ready for food boxes? They're up there. God bless you all. Bye-bye.